So yeah, welcome everyone to the IMSC 60 colloquium series. And today it's a great pleasure for us that we have Professor Toru Koyo with us. So Toru did his PhD from Kyoto University, and then he was a postdoctoral fellow at Brookhaven National Lab, and uh, subsequently at Bielefeld University, and then. At University of Illinois at Ur Urbana-Champaign, so Toru has done very highly cited works on finite phases of finite density QCD. Uh, his one of the earlier works was on quarkionic matter, which is a novel state of uh, finite density QCD matter. And after that, he has been now interested in understanding this uh, QCD matter at finite density. By looking at neutron star, which are cosmic laboratories for studying fundamental physics, and he will tell us more about that. So, Toru, please. Okay, so thank you very much, Sayantan,、uh, for the invitation, and thank you very much for kind introduction. So, and、uh, so, yeah. First, I want to say、uh, congratulations on the sixty、uh, birthday of your, your institute. And actually,、uh, last year I gave a colloquium、uh, in my institute, and I'm very happy、uh, to come back again. And uh, so uh, today I want to talk about uh, the uh, physics of dense QCD、uh, in the context of neutron star. Especially、uh, last year,、uh, we had、uh, another uh, big uh, progress in understanding of、uh, the A property of a neutron star matter、uh, from the QCD perspective. So I'm uh, very uh, happy uh, to report、uh, such progress today. So uh, the, this is、uh, the content of my talk. So、uh, I expect the audience from a broad area of physics. Therefore, I decided to give a, a brief uh, uh, reminder of、uh, quantum chromodynamics and then discuss、uh, some overview of dense QCD matter. In the second part, I will、uh, discuss the neutron star constraint on QCD equation of state. Especially、uh, last year,、uh, we had another、uh, important observational constraint on the、uh, QCD equation of state. So I will report it. In the third part, I will discuss some problem、uh, in extrapolating a nuclear matter description、uh, to add a very high density, and I will、uh, discuss the importance of quark matter. And the fourth part. Uh, is actually、uh, the most important and original, and I will discuss, I will conjecture、uh, how a、uh, quark matter formation、uh, can stiffen、uh, equation state of neutron star matter. Especially, I will discuss how quark matter formation、uh, can be related、uh, to the sound velocity peaks,、uh, which are、uh, hot topic in neutron star community. And then I will、uh, summarize my talk. So let me、uh, give, start with some brief reminder of、uh, quantum chromodynamics.、Uh, so in some sense,、uh, QCD is very similar to QED,、uh, where matter fields are electrons and positrons, and they interact through the photon exchange. In the case of QCD,、uh, we have a quark and anti-quark as matter fields, and gluons as、uh, gauge bosons. So although、uh, the theory looks similar,、uh, but there is an important difference. The photon、uh, does not have any charges. Uh, while gluon does, so usually, generally speaking, a gauge boson are coupled to a colored ob a charged object. So that means,、uh, so if gluon、uh, because gluon have a color charge, a gluon can couple to another gluon directly, and it induces some nonlinear effect. So that nonlinear effect、uh, show up in quantum correction. In the case of QED. The photon exchange is actually screened、uh, by、uh, electron and positron, and therefore the Coulomb force in QED、uh, at long distance become weaker and weaker、uh, due to the this screening effect. In the QCD case, so there is of course a screening effect. The、uh, gluon is screened by quark and anti-quark, but there is also an anti-screening process. So gluon are coupled to another gluon, okay, and the interaction becomes stronger and stronger. At longer distance, so therefore, a QCD has a strong interaction at low energy and long distance, and it becomes weaker and weaker at short distance.、Uh, so this is、uh, the celebrated asymptotic freedom. But what I want to discuss is strong coupling effect. So strong coupling at long distance 
generate two important phenomena in QCD. The first is color confinement. So suppose we uh, put a quark and anti-quark. Since a quark has a color charge, so that color charge can produce color electric flux, color electric field. But what is special in QCD is that color electric field is strongly squeezed into uh, uh, some string-like object. And then quark and anti-quark is strongly bound by a QCD string. So this is color confinement. And this system is uh, actually a color white system. Another important phenomenon in QCD is chiral symmetry break, uh, which are uh, uh, triggered uh, by the con formation of chiral condensate. The con con constituents of uh, chiral condensate is quark and anti-quark, which are bound. So usually uh, having a quark and uh, anti-quark excited costs energy, but if there is a strong attraction between quark and anti-quark, uh, then it is energetically favored uh, to keep uh, this uh, pair uh, excited. So when uh, the number of this pair uh, become macroscopic, huge number of uh, pair uh, exist, and then structure vacuum change. So that for, uh, to, uh, together with a uh, formation of chiral condensate, and the quark acquire the effective mass uh, called a constant quark mass, uh, which uh, is the order of uh, 300 MeV. So together uh, with color confinement and the chiral symmetry breaking, the basic actors in QCD are uh, baryon, which are made of three uh, constant quark, and meson, which are made of a uh, quark and anti-quark. The mass of baryon is about three times constant quark mass, therefore the order of one GB, and the meson mass is about twice a constant quark mass. And in addition to this constant uh, ob uh, made of object made of constant quark, uh, there, is a, there are also numb Golson bosons associated uh, with chiral symmetry breaking. And all of these objects are main actors in low energy QCD. Okay, so I discussed some microscopic uh, physics. Now I want to uh, say something, how are these microscopic physics are uh, related uh, to a macroscopic object. So as I emphasize, the original quark acquire a uh, constant quark mass through the chiral symmetry breaking, and it must become 300 MeV. And at even longer distance, these constant quarks are trapped into a barrier or a meson. For example, a nucleon is such an example. And then uh, these nucleon, as uh, a color white object, uh, interact through uh, nuclear forces and making a uh, nuclear. And these nuclei are constituents of the visible part of the universe. And in the context of the universe, uh, the early stage of the universe have uh, a hot uh, QCD matter uh, called a quark gluon plasma, uh, which can be described by hot QCD uh, formalism. On the other hand, as the uni universe uh, cooled down, uh, then uh, the material have some crystallized object, uh, like uh, stars, and especially uh, the, our universe in present day have the neutron star, uh, which are extremely massive, extremely compact, and extremely dense. And such extreme matter can be described, uh, that description of such extreme matter uh, require uh, the framework of uh, called dense QCD. So uh, from this context, so these, uh, discuss, uh, these phenomena or this uh, property of nature uh, bring us to the discussion of uh, QCD phase diagram. And here T is temperature and mu B is baryon chemical potential, but roughly speaking, you can regard mu B as just the baryon density. So there are three distinct uh, matter. At low temperature and low baryon density, we have a hadronic matter. By heating up uh, this hadronic matter, uh, hadronic matter uh, transform into a, a quark gluon plasma uh, through the uh, crossover transition. And this sort of hot matter uh, can be created uh, by relativistic heavy ion collision. And this field is, uh, has now uh, become a matured field. And another uh, big science uh, can be found at the low temperature and high baryon density, uh, where we have the physics of nuclear, uh, neutron star, uh, physics of neutron stars. And this field is now, now rapidly uh, developing, especially after the discovery of a gravitational wave uh, from neutron star, neutron star major in 2017, uh, that opened the new field uh, of the March messenger astronomy. And today I will mainly focus on the physics of dense QCD uh, in the context of a neutron star here. 
So now, uh, the fundamental, let me uh, mention some fundamental questions in dense QCD. The first question is the nature of confinement to the confinement phase transition. So when you uh, compress a nuclei, okay, then eventually we will uh, see a uh, degrees of freedom. So that should be a uh, confinement. But the nature of uh, such transition uh, from nuclear matter to coke matter are not uh, fully understood. So this question is fundamental and is very important uh, in, in the context of dense QCD. The second important question is the fate of coke mass. So usual uh, co uh, modeling uh, suggests that the chiral restoration should happen at very uh, high density. So if uh, it is true, uh, then constant coke mass of 300 MeV uh, should vanish roughly. Then uh, there should be some radical consequence in, uh, in our universe. So this is a second uh, important question. The third question uh, is uh, how uh, nuclear matter and coke matter uh, can be related or can be distinguished. And this is actually a very hot topic in neutron star community, especially uh, whether uh, the uh, hadron to coke matter phase transition are first order or second order or crossover are uh, not uh, fully understood but it should be, uh, inf have an important consequence in astrophysical observable. And the last question here is uh, whether coke matter can be, exist in our universe or whether a coke matter can exist in, in neutron star. And in today's discussion, I try to uh, answer partly uh, to this question, at least partly. But uh, now uh, let me, uh, I have to mention uh, the difficulty uh, in describing dense QCD matter. The first important problem is lattice Monte Carlo simulation, which is first principle method, uh, cannot be used uh, for the study of dense QCD uh, due to the uh, famous assigned problem in Monte Carlo simulation. The situation is quite different uh, from the uh, hot QCD case, uh, where lattice Monte Carlo calculation has provided uh, many important information, and the study is now uh, matured. But such kind of uh, powerful method cannot be used uh, for dense QCD. Second problem is we cannot uh, design uh, the laboratories for dense QCD. So we have to wait uh, for good signal uh, from our universe. Again, uh, this situation is quite different uh, from hot QCD case. So where uh, we could use a uh, relativistic heavy ion collision uh, to create a hot, uh, hot matter. But uh, we have to be very patient uh, to study a uh, dense QCD. The third question is a conceptual one. So nuclear matter by itself is rather a complicated object because the system is strongly correlated. And in fact, uh, difficulty uh, to understand nuclear matter, uh, of course, uh, make uh, difficulty uh, to discriminate nuclear matter from clock matter. And at the conceptual level, it is very difficult uh, to dis distinguish nuclear matter uh, and clock matter. For example, a nuclear matter system uh, can have the nuclear nuclear interaction uh, that is usually uh, described by meson exchange, like pi on low, low meson, omega meson, etc. As far as the system is dilute, uh, then uh, we can cross our description just using a hadronic variable. But microscopically, the pion exchange or meson exchange uh, is uh, just a, a quark exchange uh, between NC quark and NC quarks. So as far as system is dilute and the neutrons are widely separated, uh, then we can regard this quark exchange as meson exchange. But as we increase density and the two neutrons are come close together, uh, then it is difficult uh, to uh, regard this coke exchange as a meson exchange. And there, sh there, should, there is no a sharp distinction between this regime and this regime. So that's the reason why uh, it is difficult to address the uh, transition. But in what follows, the picture we are developing uh, is uh, following. So this sort of picture was originally uh, proposed by Masada Hatsa Takatsuka in 2012 and later elab further elaborated uh, by Illinois group, including myself. And here, uh, we use the unit uh, nuclear saturation density. Uh, this is roughly uh, the baryon density inside of a uh, nuclei. Okay. So there are uh, three uh, distinct regimes, at least. So when uh, matter is dilute, uh, then, of course, we have nuclear matter, and the neutron interact uh, by exchanging meson or quarks. And as far as uh, matter is dilute, uh, then neutrons are just a well-defined object, 
and then nuclear matter descriptions are just fine. But uh, this uh, regime has a problem uh, beyond uh, twice nuclear saturation density, where uh, it is known that many body nuclear forces have become impo very important. Since uh, many nuclear forces are basically many quark exchange, so this sort of uh, this picture uh, naturally lays a question uh, whether a structural change of hadron happen or not. So many quark exchange uh, naturally uh, from this sort of uh, many quark exchange, we naturally expect the structural change of hadron as well as the excitation beyond uh, baryon, uh, beyond purely uh, nucleonic regime, like high bronze, delta, et cetera, et cetera. And actually, uh, this regime is most difficult theoretically because degrees of freedom are not clear cut. On the other hand, uh, this regime is most important uh, from the uh, context of neutron stars. So, uh, but, uh, so let me uh, go further and beyond a uh, five times nuclear saturation density and where our baryons over start to overlap and our description actually gets simpler after baryon overlap because now our uh, degrees of freedom are naturally uh, quarks. In that sense, uh, we call uh, the, the re regime beyond five times nuclear saturation density and uh, just a quark matter. But this quark matter uh, should be distinguished uh, from the uh, conventional uh, weakly coupled quark matter because part of the QCD uh, predicts its breakdown at density less than 40 times nuclear saturation density. Therefore, a uh, quark matter uh, between 5 and uh, 40 times nuclear saturation density should be regarded as a strongly correlated quark matter. And today, I will uh, mainly uh, discuss the uh, physics between uh, 2 and five times nuclear saturation density uh, using the hints from neutron star observation. So now uh, let me uh, discuss a neutron star property a little bit and its constraint. So neutron stars are highly uh, exotic object. So highly massive. So its mass is order uh, one to twice uh, solar mass. And its radius is very small, uh, order 10 to 12 kilometer, which is much smaller than the radius of the sun. So the neutron star is extremely a uh, compact object. Its temperature is order a kilo electron volt. Uh, therefore, uh, it can be regarded as zero temperature matter. So since a uh, huge energy density mass exists within very small domain, so general relativistic effects are very important. So, uh, and as for density, uh, one can just divide neutron star mass uh, by the volume of neutron star times nuclear mass. Uh, then its density is order one uh, inverse uh, cubic fermion. So it's very dense. And this uh, scale, density scale, is uh, required as a description uh, based on QCD. So, so how about the density distribution, uh, the density distribution in neutron star? So neutron star contain uh, many different density regimes, a wide uh, range of density regime from 10 to minus 9th, time saturation density to uh, 10 times nuclear saturation density, and it looks very complicated. But as far as uh, we uh, discuss the mass radius relation, for example, what is relevant is just uh, the core region. The point is, so there are uh, very dilute regime, but dilute matter uh, can be easily compressed. Therefore, uh, its uh, contribution to size is uh, extremely small. So this sort of uh, atomic regime or nuclear uh, nuclear regime, et cetera, uh, such kind of matter can exist only within very uh, small uh, shell. Okay, that's a share only very small amount of volume. And this cross the region is important when we discuss a uh, uh, surface phenomena. But as far as we discuss the overall structure of neutron star, uh, what is relevant is just uh, nuclear physics and uh, beyond, like a uh, quark matter. And I will be, uh, be basically uh, focus on uh, this range of matter, and, and I will not talk about a uh, crust part. So let me briefly mention uh, the history of a neutron star. So where are we now? So neutron star uh, was uh, neutron star were originally uh, proposed, predicted by Zwicky and Bade in 2000. Uh, okay, uh, sorry, uh, 1934, just after the discovery of a neutron uh, by Charlie. 
So surprisingly, uh, they correctly are predicted. So the origin of neutron star is the supernova. So supernova event, perhaps, uh, transform an ordinary star into highly compressed neutron star. Neutron star. And after about 30 years, so Bell and Hubish uh, found the first uh, neutron star uh, in the uh, other parts. So their measurement uh, confirmed the existence of a neutron star. After about seven years, so Taylor and Farris uh, found the first binary uh, pulsar uh, made of uh, two neutron stars, so double neutron star system. And uh, interestingly, so they, this uh, observation uh, also confirmed uh, the uh, presence of a gravitational wave. So this is somewhat uh, indirect, but they uh, confirmed the, the, uh, the presence of uh, existence of gravitational wave. So two, two neutron stars actually uh, keep emitting gravitational wave, and it loses energy slowly and slowly. And such a uh, re reduction of energy in the system actually change the orbit, orbital time. And that orbital time uh, becomes uh, shorter and sh shorter after emitting a gravitational wave. And that uh, behavior is uh, perfectly consistent uh, with the prediction of gravity, uh, general relativity. But the modern era of neutron star has begun around 2010 after the discovery of two solar mass neutron star. So before, before this discovery, a neutron star uh, maximum mass uh, are regarded as a bit smaller. And somewhat uh, it uh, constraint, uh, it gives a di totally different constraint uh, from uh, today's constraint. But after the uh, two solar mass discovery of two solar mass neutron star, so our uh, the guide uh, to construct uh, equation of state uh, uh, can have uh, changed dramatically. So it is, uh, in fact, a very re is revolutionary uh, uh, finding. And it, it changed the way of thinking uh, will change, change our insights on the uh, property of dense matter. And later, another revolutionary discovery happened. Uh, so uh, namely, a gravitational wave was discovered. The gravitational wave from a neutron star merger uh, was discovered uh, together with uh, electromagnetic counterpart. And uh, so this sort of analysis uh, utilizes a gravitational wave, electromagnetic wave, and also a neutrino event, neutrino uh, signature. Uh, therefore, it is called uh, multi messenger astronomy. Okay, so now so let me uh, mention uh, the relation between uh, QCD and mass radius relation. So mass radius relation uh, of neutron star can be calculated uh, by solving uh, Einstein equation uh, coupled to a uh, QCD energy momentum tensor. And here, uh, QCD contribute in term, uh, uh, through the uh, equation state. And what is relevant uh, is the balance between pressure and energy density. So when energy density inside of a uh, star is uh, bigger and bigger, uh, then the gravitational force becomes stronger. So that attracts material uh, towards the center. But in order to avoid the gravitational perhaps, that compression uh, increases uh, pressure inside of a star. And when a pressure, if a pressure is strong enough, uh, then uh, the neutron star can avoid the gravitational perhaps. So in this way, the balance between pressure and energy density is important. And here, uh, let me uh, introduce some terminology, a soft and stiff equation of state. The soft equation of state means a uh, pressure Okay. Pressure at the given energy density is small. Okay. If the pressure is small, uh, then equation of state is called, uh, is called a soft. So a soft equation of state naturally have smaller radius and smaller maximum mass because energy density uh, dominate over pressure. For stiff equation of state, uh, radius tend to be larger and the maximum mass tend to be larger. But the recent neutron star observation uh, seem to suggest that equation of state should be soft to stiff type. That is, uh, equation of state is soft at low density, but stiff at high density. And in this uh, soft to stiff combination, the neutron star uh, tends to have a small radius, but nevertheless uh, have a very uh, large mass. And here I want to uh, summarize the uh, the observational constraint obtained so far. 
The most up to date uh, observation constraint is due to the uh, NICE uh, collaboration. So NICE uh, uh, measured the radius of 2.1 solar mass neutron star and 1.4 solar mass neutron star. And they combined uh, that observation uh, with uh, uh, constraints from gravitational wave, gravitational wave event, GW17 or H17. And also they combined uh, the constraints from low density nuclear physics. So there are uh, some first principle uh, calculation for nuclear uh, equation state that constraint the uh, range of radius. So all these uh, constraints uh, taken together, the NICE are concluded a 2.1 solar mass neutron star has a radius of 12.4 kilometer, which is almost the same as the uh, 1.4, the radius of the 1.4 solar mass neutron star. So this finding is quite remarkable. So this uh, disfavor the, the existence of a strong fast order phase transition between a 1.4 solar mass region and 2.1 solar mass region. For example, so if we had a strong fast order phase, phase transition, uh, then our pressure uh, should be constant and the energy density jump. Okay, so this uh, induces a strong softening. And if uh, there are such strong softening, uh, there should be radical shrinkage of radius like this. Okay. But such kind of radical shrinkage of radius has not been found so far. And for this reason, uh, we concluded that at least uh, between this domain and this domain, a uh, strong uh, fast order phase transition is disfavored. And we uh, now uh, concentrate on the scenario of soft to stiff uh, combination of equation state. But theoretically speaking, uh, this soft, soft to stiff combination is very uh, challenging. The bottleneck is a uh, the sound velocity constraint uh, com coming from the causality. So again, this is pressure versus energy density. So in order to have the soft to stiff combination, so we have to start uh, with a soft equation of state at low density, but must reach a stiff equation of state at a high density. And in between, uh, there must be a rapid growth of pressure as a function of energy density. But uh, this uh, slope, dpd epsilon, is nothing but the square of sound velocity, which must be smaller than one. So in this way, uh, low density and high density equation of state, okay, are actually strongly correlated and give a strong constraint uh, in the domain, strong constraint on the domain between low and high density region. So if we had, for example, a strong fast order phase transition in between, uh, then there must be rapid softening. And after that, that softening must be compensated by radical uh, stiffening. But this curve uh, tend to violate the causality constraint and therefore must be rejected. And actually, uh, this is the reason why uh, we prefer uh, to consider uh, just a smooth curve uh, between low and high density. And this uh, leads us to the uh, picture of coke hadron continuity. So we take coke hadron continuity as a baseline to fill, fill, fill uh, this uh, disparity between low and high density. And this argument itself uh, does not fully reject weak first order phase transition like this. But uh, as far as uh, first order phase transition is weak, uh, such kind of a small uh, effect uh, can be treated as a perturbation uh, to our to this baseline. So therefore, uh, in the following, uh, we assume a coke hadron continuity uh, taking it as our baseline. So this is our strategy anyway. So finally, uh, let me mention, uh, so this rapid growth in pressure, okay, usually uh, naturally make uh, uh, the sound velocity uh, bigger than one third, which is called the conformal limit. And eventually this sound velocity uh, must approach to one third, uh, so-called a conformal limit or relativistic limit. So therefore, uh, this argument suggests there should be a peak in the sound velocity somewhere between two and five times nuclear saturation density. And actually, uh, this is a new quality of matter. And uh, what we want to have some have is uh, some microscopic, microscopic insights uh, based on uh, nuclear matter physics and coke matter physics. And this is, will be the uh, last uh, topic in, in today's talk, and which is very important. So before talking about the uh, nature of uh, sound velocity peak, so let me uh, briefly mention uh, what would happen uh, for the crossover uh, in the finite temperature direction. So in this direction, uh, around the crossover, 
or transition region, actually we have a dip in the sound velocity instead of peak. So actually uh, this deep, deep structure uh, is easily, uh, uh, can be easily understood uh, based on some qualitative uh, discussion. So let me uh, briefly mention it. So at a very low temperature, uh, first we have pion gas. And since pion has mass anyway, uh, at low temperature, our uh, matter, hadronic matter is just a non-relativistic matter. But pion, at, at a higher temperature, a pion a quickly becomes a relativistic object. So that's the reason why I found the velocity approach to uh, the relativistic limit. However, uh, near the crossover region, so uh, the actually massive resonance with mass much bigger than temperature uh, make important contribution. So although they are suppressed by Boltzmann factor, uh, there are a huge number of uh, hadronic resonance. Uh, therefore, uh, that kind of uh, entropic effect dominate over Boltzmann suppression. Therefore, near the crossover region, our system is fully dominated by non-relativistic particle. Okay, so pion again give just a minor contribution and non-relativistic resonance dominate uh, the system. Uh, that's the reason why a sound velocity approach to the non-relativistic behavior. But after hadrons are uh, overlap each other, we start to observe cork and gluon substructure. And that's the reason why we recover the usual uh, non-relativistic limit or conformal limit at uh, the QGP. So in this way, uh, this sort of deep structure can be understood rather in qualitative manner. And what we want to discuss today is the similar uh, qualitative discussion, which naturally uh, lead to uh, this sort of uh, peak structure. Okay, so now uh, let me briefly mention, before talking about the peak structure, uh, let me uh, briefly discuss uh, what would happen for conventional nuclear uh, matter and uh, naive uh, cock matter discussion. So let me first emphasize the nuclear problem in nuclear, purely nuclear uh, description. So in order to discuss the purely nuclear uh, nuclear matter, uh, let me start with some uh, parametric pa parameterized equation state. So energy density as a function of number density. So there are three terms here. So first important term is mass contribution. So mass times density, which is actually quite large. And the second contribution is kinetic energy contribution of nucleon, uh, which is actually quite small because there are big scale uh, nuclear mass in the denominator. The third term is interaction. And if you want to calculate pressure, uh, what we should calculate is energy density over NB. We take derivative of energy per particle with respect to number density, okay? And then multiply NB square. So, uh, and the first important uh, message is the mass term uh, drop off from the expression pressure because E over e energy density uh, leave uh, just a nuclear mass. And if you take derivative, uh, then nuclear mass term just a bunch. So ma large mass density in the energy density uh, just drop off in the expression pressure. Uh, then uh, the contribution starts from the kinetic energy, but the kinetic energy is quite small. Therefore, Naively speaking, a nuclear matter is very soft. In order to make nuclear matter stiff, uh, then interaction must play uh, the dominant role. But uh, before uh, talking about uh, uh, interaction, let me first drop off interaction and discuss uh, how a nuclear matter uh, can be stiffened. So if we ignore interaction, the, the pressure comparable to energy density, such kind of equation of state can be achieved only if a neutrons become relativistic. But such regime uh, reach, is reached only if a baryon density uh, reaches of order 100, 100 times nuclear saturation density, uh, which is almost hopeless uh, in the uh, neutron star matter. So this kinetic energy is totally irrelevant. Second, I want to discuss now uh, the effect of interaction. So suppose uh, we have the uh, alpha body forces. So if we consider two body forces, uh, then alpha is two, three body forces, alpha should be three, four body forces, alpha should be four. So if alpha is bigger than one, okay, uh, then uh, this term has the largest power in number density. And therefore at high density limit, uh, this term uh, should be more important than the uh, mass density. And pressure is totally dominated by pressure. Uh, dominated by uh, interaction. 
So in that uh, high density regime, uh, one can uh, derive uh, relate a uh, pressure in terms of, one can uh, write pressure as a function of energy density in this way. The pressure is given by alpha minus one times en energy density. So therefore, sound velocity is given by alpha minus one. So if we uh, consider a two-body interaction at high density, uh, then alpha is two. Uh, therefore, in high density regime, the sound velocity approaches to just one. If you have a three-body interaction, uh, then uh, alpha is three. Uh, therefore, a sound velocity square approaches to two at the uh, high density limit. And uh, somewhere, a uh, three-body uh, model uh, violates the causality constraint. So uh, here is uh, some dilemma. So we want to uh, make nuclear equation of state stiff. And in that case, uh, interaction must play an important role. And typically, a nuclear model uh, requires uh, three nuclear forces, three nuclear uh, repulsion. But uh, such three nuclear forces, in, in, by construction, uh, tend to violate causality constraint at very high density. And in fact, uh, the very uh, famous uh, Akmar uh, Pande, Pandeli Pande uh, Ravenhoff equation of state with three nuclear interaction, uh, in fact, the violate causality constraint around 5.5 uh, times nuclear saturation density. But this equation of state uh, satisfies two solar mass constraint uh, due to uh, this stiff, uh, the stiff equation of state around here. But uh, it is uh, this region is actually uh, questionable uh, in description. So the problem here is so three body forces uh, play dominant role uh, when uh, we try to satisfy two solar mass constraint. But if three body forces are dominant, uh, then uh, there is a, a question uh, whether four body forces are important or five body or six body forces are important or not. And there is no uh, co sign for co uh, convergence. Okay. And this is trend is actually quite common for uh, many uh, nuclear models based on microscopic. Uh, uh, forces. So therefore, uh, we need something else. And let me emphasize a uh, coke matter description uh, can give a better uh, baseline actually. Okay. So uh, as a, so if you ignore interaction or mass correction, all of the, all of such kind of uh, subtle effect, uh, then uh, the pure uh, coke matter uh, equation of state leads to a sound velocity square equal to one third. And this is our starting point. And let me uh, consider the simplest uh, possible uh, quark matter equation of state uh, called the bug model. So here, a uh, model does not have interaction or a mass term, but there is some just a free gas contribution. And also there is some, uh, some uh, normalization constant for equation of state. So our pressure uh, becomes smaller uh, when a uh, bug constant becomes larger. In terms of energy density, the bug constant uh, can give a positive contribution. So therefore, uh, when uh, B is bigger, the okay, equation of state, when B is bigger and bigger, energy density is bigger, pressure is smaller, uh, therefore it makes equation of state very soft. If bug constant is smaller, uh, then epsilon energy density becomes smaller and pressure becomes weaker, uh, therefore it leads to the stiffer equation of state. So whether quark matter equation of state uh, can, is stiff or not, uh, actually, uh, basically, completely determined uh, by the size of bug constant. In fact, uh, for small bug constant in uh, non-interacting quark gas, actually, uh, one can achieve a two-solar mass constraint for sufficiently small uh, bug constant. And in fact, as we uh, decrease bug constant, small, uh, bug constant more and more, uh, then it leads to bigger and bigger mass. Okay. But of course, there is some uh, problem. So when we take very small bug constant, uh, then we have to accept quark matter at very uh, low density, at density less than 1.8 times nuclear saturation density. So when a two solar mass constraint is passed, actually, uh, the quark matter equation of state uh, begin uh, with uh, about 1.8 as uh, nuclear saturation density, uh, which is very unlikely. But the mess, many, main message here is quark matter, even without interaction, uh, can lead to a very uh, stiff equation of state. But uh, let me uh, want discuss more, uh, something more realistic. So now I want to discuss a little bit more realistic uh, setup. So here how I consider again that some parameterization of energy density as a function of uh, quark density. 
The first term is a relativistic kinetic energy. So it is N, N2 half or third. Okay, so that is about mu two force. Okay. So this is reading order contribution. And again, I consider some parameterization for interaction. And starting with this uh, equation of state, uh, one can uh, calculate pressure. And then uh, we get uh, uh, this expression. The first term is just given by epsilon over third. So that is ideal or conformal, uh, conformal limit of the uh, pressure. And here we have a contribution from interaction. And this interaction is actually quite interesting. So uh, what, what we want to have is a large pressure as a function of energy density, okay? So if uh, we assume the interaction has a power of bigger than four thirds, okay? And then in that case, uh, this term, uh, this uh, inside of uh, this parenthesis uh, it becomes positive. And in that case, our pressure becomes larger when B is positive, okay? So this is uh, the uh, basically the repulsive uh, interaction for quark matter. And this sort of uh, stiffening, uh, many people actually discussed, so have discussed. But the less known uh, situation is a case uh, where uh, this term uh, becomes negative. That is, alpha is smaller than four thirds. So this term is negative, and in that case, our pressure uh, becomes bigger when B is negative. That is, when B is negative B describes the attractive correlation. So attractive correlation can uh, stiffen an uh, equation of state if a uh, power is less than a uh, force. And there are, uh, sub, uh, there are uh, very realistic uh, example uh, such, such, that read uh, this sort of power. That is the pairing effect near the Fermi surface. The phase space near the Fermi surface is about four pi times the Fermi momentum square. So in terms of density, it is NB to uh, two third. So such kind of uh, Fermi surface contribution with attraction uh, can lead to uh, the stiffer equation of state. So this example, this, uh, this simple discussion uh, suggests the serious discussion on the uh, property of the coke Fermi surface. Okay, this is coke Fermi C. We have coke Fermi C and we have coke Fermi surface. And this, if this region has attractive correlation, uh, then we can achieve a stiff coke matter equation state. And there are uh, many uh, physical candidates uh, for such uh, Fermi surface physics. The first, the uh, famous example is a two particle correlation discussed in the context of dicoque uh, pairing. And such a uh, dicoque pairing uh, can uh, lead to the uh, so called uh, color superconductor, uh, which has been discussed by Bailey Lab, Alford, Al Raju Kopa, Wiltek, et cetera, et cetera. So this example uh, is very famous. But there are also uh, three particle correlation. Uh, which has been discussed in the context of coking matter uh, by, my, by uh, McLaren and Pisarski. So in this picture, uh, there is a coke Fermi C, but near the Fermi surface, uh, there are strong baryonic correlation. So in what follows? Attractive correlation near the Fermi surface. In either case, I can stiffen equation of state. So this is a main message. So now uh, let me uh, move to the final subject. So how uh, sound velocity peak? Uh, can be driven uh, by the presence of cold matter. But before talking about detail, uh, let me first emphasize uh, some uh, confusion uh, related uh, to the uh, hybrid uh, hybrid modeling. So hybrid modeling uh, in in hybrid in conventional hybrid model, so we use a baryonic description at low density, but switch to cold matter description at high density. But when uh, we uh, do such kind of a patchwork, uh, we switch degrees of freedom uh, from baryon to quark. But uh, in such a switching of the uh, effective degrees of freedom, so we lose uh, control over the uh, normalization constant in a partition function. So baryonic partition function and quark matter partition function has normalization, but it is difficult to compare uh, the normalization constant. In other words, in, in phys more physics term, uh, it is difficult to compare the contribution from baryonic Dirac C and Coke Dirac C. Both of them uh, play important role in equation state. But of course, uh, such kind of, uh, and actually this is uh, where the, uh, the place where we have to introduce uh, the Coke, uh, introduce uh, some uh, additional parameter uh, like uh, bug constant. 
So bulk constant is basically characterize the, uh, the normalization of equation of state, and it is very difficult to compute it. And depending on the value of bulk constant, so one can create a variety of scenario and a variety of equation of state. But uh, of course, uh, such kind of uncertainty want to be avoided. So as I emphasize, uh, such kind of uncertainty uh, come from uh, the switching of degrees of freedom. Therefore, in this talk, I will keep track of uh, clock degrees of freedom only, uh, all the way uh, from the uh, nuclear matter to clock matter. And needless uh, to say, uh, such kind of description uh, theoretically very uh, difficult. And in fact, uh, my description uh, will be very awkward. Nevertheless, actually, uh, this sort of even rough a qualitative discussion uh, clarify a lot of things about the uh, transition from nuclear to coke matter. So that's the reason why I will first discuss a uh, coke inside of a single nuclear or single body. So in principle, uh, one can uh, solve a three coke problem uh, to uh, construct a body. So by solving a three uh, body problem, so one can uh, calculate a three body wave function. And by integrating out uh, two of a uh, coke, inside the uh, baryonic system, so one can calculate a single uh, coke momentum distribution inside of a single uh, nucleon. And here I pretend I already solved the problem and got uh, the uh, momentum distribution uh, given by uh, Gaussian uh, distribution. And if you want to derive this distribution, uh, actually there are uh, such kind of model, so namely a non-relativistic uh, coke model uh, with a harmonic oscillator potential. And after solving it, we can get uh, this sort of Gaussian distribution, although it is not quite realistic. But anyway, so this example is very useful uh, for illustration purposes. So now let me uh, discuss the property of this uh, uh, momentum distribution. So this distribution depends on coke momentum and baryon momentum. Okay. And so since uh, baryon momentum is a sum of three coke momentum, so average of a uh, momentum is given by just uh, PB over three, okay? PB over NC, okay? So this is average coke uh, momentum. And if a uh, baryon momentum is small, uh, then average coke momentum is also small. But uh, here, uh, the point is, so although uh, average coke momentum is small, its variance uh, can be quite big uh, because baryons, the cokes are now trapped into a very compact region. And therefore, uh, inside of such compact region, a uh, coke can be quite energetic. And in fact, a coke is naturally uh, relativistic. So therefore, uh, all, even though a uh, baryonic matter is not quite, uh, even though a uh, baryonic matter is very uh, non-relativistic, uh, inside of uh, baryonic matter, inside of baryon, a uh, coke are uh, actually quite relativistic. And this will uh, play, this observation will play a very important role in the following discussion. So, uh, but before proceeding, uh, let me briefly mention how uh, baryonic, baryonic uh, energy can be computed from this picture. So here we adopt a very simple picture, namely uh, we uh, compute a single coke energy and then just multiply NC. So this single coke energy can be computed uh, by by putting some coke single coke energy and convoluted uh, with this uh, coke momentum distribution. Okay. And here uh, we have uh, the baryon at the finite momentum, but it is convenient uh, to perform expansion of uh, a baryon momentum. Then uh, after doing such expansion, the leading order term is just given by a single average coke energy at the baryon at rest. And by multiplying a factor NC, uh, we get NC times constant coke mass uh, plus a coke kinetic energy uh, that form uh, the baryonic uh, mass. And the correction, of a value, finite value momentum actually starts uh, from the uh, PB over NC, PB square over NC square. Okay, so one over NC correction vanish after taking average, and the, the correction starts from one over NC square uh, correction. And after multiplying the factor NC, uh, then we get the expression uh, PB square over NC times EQ. So that is natural uh, expression. This NC times N EQ is nothing but the uh, baryon mass. Uh, therefore, it gives a usual, uh, usual uh, kinetic energy description uh, for the uh, baryon. 
In what follows, I will uh, keep going uh, with this uh, sort of uh, crude description because it is enough uh, to extract the main feature of the uh, problem. Okay, so now I finished the discussion for coke inside of a single nucleon. And now I want to discuss uh, coke in a, a baryonic matter. So here uh, we introduce the uh, uh, following uh, intuitive model. So there are uh, three important functions. The first function is queuing the coke momentum distribution in a baryon, uh, which I have discussed just in the uh, last slide. And second important function is occupation probability of baryonic states. So which is a function of baryon momentum and baryon density. For example, uh, if you uh, want to consider ideal uh, baryon gas, uh, then in that case, a baryon occupies states with probability one uh, from zero momentum to Fermi momentum, okay? So with probability one. And after integrating this distribution, uh, we get simply the baryon number. So together with this coke momentum distribution in a single baryon and this uh, coke, uh, occupation probability of baryonic state. So we basically just pile up the uh, contribution uh, from each baryon and then get the occupation probability of coke state, okay? And in the case of ideal uh, baryon gas description, if you put the baryonic state in this way into the uh, phase space, uh, then uh, coke occupation probability uh, is uh, turns out to grow into the uh, vertical direction. Okay, so basically it maintains the shape in the same uh, shape as the uh, thing uh, the coke momentum distribution in a single baryon, but its height uh, simply grow uh, grow up into the uh, vertical direction. Let me elaborate this point more uh, by doing some calculation. So here again, I do some expansion of baryon momentum. Okay, so queuing was P, a function of coke momentum and baryon momentum, but now I do the expansion. And this uh, PB square correction is order 10% effect because we have NC square, uh, NC square in the denominator. So if we just uh, keep, uh, keep, di keep this term, and then this term uh, does not depend on PB dependence, therefore you can put this uh, function uh, outside of this integral. So QE is factored out. And so now we have just integration of uh, this occupation probability. And in the case of ideal gas, it just gives the baryon density. So FQ behave like NB times QE. So this is a proof uh, that the Q, uh, FQ uh, just develop into the horizontal direction as we increase the number density if we uh, neglect the uh, kinetic energy correction. And energy density uh, can be computed again uh, by doing this expansion. And then leading order time uh, is just given by NB times uh, baryon mass at rest. And this is nothing but non-relativistic expression for baryonic matter. So it works uh, in reasonable way. But uh, what is important is this behavior. And now let me uh, discuss how uh, occupation probability uh, for baryonic states and a quark state above as a function of the baryon density. As again, I just keep, uh, keep going with ideal uh, baryon gas description. Okay, so we uh, increase the baryon density by increasing the uh, baryonic Fermi C in, into this way. Okay, so when a baryon, ideal baryon gas uh, density increase in this way, the quark occupation probability grow into the uh, in the uh, vertical direction in this way. Okay. But uh, this sort of uh, behavior uh, must be uh, terminated uh, at some density. Because when a uh, baryon density reaches uh, some critical density, okay, so this vertical direction, okay, uh, will be, will hit uh, some upper bound. So FQ is a probability. Therefore, it cannot exceed one. If it exceeds one, it, uh, it violates the power uh, uh, principle. And therefore, at some critical density, uh, the raw momentum state of quark uh, is fully saturated. So I call it a quark saturation. And this quark saturation, after this quark saturation, uh, something dramatic happened. So after this quark saturation, we cannot keep putting baryon in this way. In, as the, we cannot pretend ideal baryon gas description like this. So in order to avoid a violation of a quark party principle, now we have to put baryon into high momentum state, but with less small occupation probability. So this domain is actually forbidden. 
due to coax sub structure. And actually, uh, this is an essential idea uh, of a McLaren ready model uh, based on coking water description. So in this way, by putting, by generating a relativistic value in this way, so now uh, non-relativistic non variant matter becomes a relativistic variant matter and which naturally have a very stiff equation of state. So uh, if we just uh, stick uh, to the uh, baryonic description, we have to uh, use this sort of uh, exotic picture. But in terms of Coke description, uh, what we have is quite natural. So uh, after Coke saturation happen, what happens next is this, this occupation probability must grow into the uh, horizontal direction in this way. So this, in this way, uh, we, this matter and uh, approach to the usual uh, coke matter description with rigid uh, coke Fermi surface. So, so this is uh, our uh, picture uh, that connect nuclear matter to coke matter. But uh, let me uh, elaborate the point. So why this sort of uh, behavior uh, can stiffen equation state? So this is now here uh, is a discussion based on a uh, uh, picture. So here I will uh, just focus on coke occupation probability. And as I emphasize, uh, this is highly schematic picture. Instead of Gaussian, I just consider this sort of uh, step function for simplicity. So when uh, density is low enough, uh, then occupation probability simply grow into the uh, vertical direction. And in this regime, uh, we just uh, add uh, some copy of this sort of distribution, pile up this sort of copy of distribution. And in that case, uh, energy uh, per particle, epsilon over NB is just a constant. But if this one is constant, the pressure okay, is given by the derivative of this uh, constant with respect to number and density. Uh, therefore, within this regime, a uh, pressure is zero, or well, at least it is very small. But when a state is saturated, coke states are saturated, uh, then uh, one cannot go further in the vertical direction anymore. And then coke occupation probability must grow into the uh, horizontal direction. Okay. So before the saturation, a uh, pressure is zero, but after the saturation, now epsilon over NB uh, start to grow in this way. Uh, therefore, uh, suddenly uh, pressure uh, change uh, from value zero uh, to finite value. Therefore, uh, pressure jump. On the other hand, as far as FQ, distribution of FQ is uh, continuous, energy density and NB, baryon density, are just continuous. Okay. Therefore, we have some uh, very exotic situation. So epsilon over and NB is continuous, but pressure uh, radically increases. And actually, this sort of behavior is exactly opposite uh, to the usual uh, first order phase transition, where uh, pressure is constant, but energy density jump. Here we have opposite. So we have a constant energy density, but jumping pressure. So let me uh, rephrase the same thing in a slightly different uh, picture. Okay. So what we have, so again, this is pressure versus energy density. And what I have just discussed is, so when we uh, consider ideal uh, baryon gas, uh, then uh, basically energy density is much bigger than pressure and it is very soft. And if we keep pretend a baryon uh, uh, elementary particle, uh, then uh, pressure grow very slowly. Okay. And there is no chance to satisfy two solar mass constraint. But before this sort, before, but uh, this baryonic description must be uh, terminated uh, by the uh, Coke substructure. And there is an inevitable stiffening uh, due to a uh, coke saturation. And after coke saturation happen at constant energy density, pressure jump. And again, after that, it scale like a coke matter description. And this is the basic idea uh, based on the uh, coke hadron continuity. And since uh, epsilon is constant uh, for the uh, finite change of pressure, so dpg epsilon has a, a positive divergence. And of course, uh, this is uh, unphysical, and this is just an artifact of overusing the ideal gas baryon description. But the point here is even without a baryon interaction, the leading order uh, discussion based on uh, non-interacting gas already uh, gives us uh, this sort of uh, peak structure in the sound velocity. And the role of uh, nuclear interaction, et cetera, uh, is just to uh, smear out uh, this uh, diverging uh, sound velocity stru peak structure. 
So re recalling that the baryon baryon interactions are mediated by Coq exchange, it is natural uh, to expect before Coq saturation happen, uh, there should be some precursory behavior uh, due to Coq exchange. And therefore, uh, there should be grow, uh, uh, the stiffening due to this nuclear interaction that smear out the previous discontinuous change in pressure into smooth one. And we found by some numerical study that uh, even sm small amount of uh, small smearing, this sort of smearing effect can easily uh, temper the uh, previous uh, diverging behavior into a uh, finite behavior. And this is uh, just uh, we wanted. And let me emphasize that again, the origin of this peak, peak structure, the main driving force is not the nuclear forces. Main driving force of this sort of weird structure uh, is come from the coke substructure, not the nuclear forces. The role of nuclear forces is just to smear out, smooth out uh, this uh, radical uh, change in the uh, pressure. So from this observation, uh, we concluded that the origin of this peak, peak structure is related uh, to the coke substructure. Uh, therefore, this uh, peak in the sound velocity uh, can be regarded as a, a coke matter formation. And this is uh, my uh, main conclusion in this talk. And uh, so there, is, there are already uh, some indication uh, based on the uh, lattice study. So actually, a uh, two-color uh, QCD uh, can be simulated uh, at finite density. So there is some special property. And two-color uh, dense QCD matter uh, can be simulated on the lattice. And recently, uh, Eto, Ito and uh, Ida uh, actually computed uh, sound velocity at a fun, uh, in, 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 on the lattice. And they found, uh, so correct, they found initially uh, the phase at low density is dominated by Dicoque BC. And it follows the, the prediction of chiral perturbation theory. But uh, uh, there is uh, some, uh, after developing a peak structure, it starts to approach to uh, one third value. And this sort of uh, behavior uh, was predicted by uh, me and uh, Svenaga uh, last year. So, with, and we, so the point is, so whether the composite structure of uh, dicoque baryon are essential. So having a dicoque baryon, and after having the overlap of such, uh, such coke saturation effect of a uh, dicoque baryon, a uh, sound velocity grows very rapidly. And interestingly, this rapid growth in sound velocity, uh, if you uh, convert the unit into the three color QCD, it is uh, it's about twice nuclear saturation density. So it is uh, close to the uh, nuclear matter domain rather than the overlap of core core. And let me uh, briefly mention, so I'm closing uh, my discussion. So let me briefly mention about the uh, quantum number. Okay. So far, I didn't discuss any uh, complication about flavor structure of baryon. So now uh, let me briefly mention it. So uh, if you consider uh, NC uh, color and NF flavor, uh, then Coke uh, quantum number is NC NF times uh, two. Okay. And uh, so there are uh, uh, op the, the state open uh, for Coke states. So the question is uh, how many baryon species are needed? So we need only nucleon proton neutron to saturate this space, or do we need a delta a baryon or a hyper, et cetera, et cetera? Uh, that is a question. But uh, it turns out we need only six pieces uh, of baryon. So this is the, the simplest version. So let me uh, consider delta plus plus with the spin, uh, z component of spin, uh, three, three half and minus three half, delta minus and omega minus. So we have uh, six uh, baryons. And suppose just we put a single uh, delta plus, plus state into the system. Then uh, just using this single uh, delta plus, plus system, so all of coca made uh, U and up state, and there are R, G, B uh, color states, and single delta plus, plus state, uh, just one baryon, uh, completely fill uh, U coke state in all color. Okay. Similarly, uh, S coke with down, uh, down, speed, down spin state for R, G, B, can be completely filled by just putting single omega minus value. And in this way, repeating this uh, discussion for all quantum number for UDS with, with different color and up and down spin can be just uh, fulfilled by introducing six baryon species. So this gives us an inter interesting uh, implication. So uh, if suppose we have, for example, a huge 
neutron uh, density. Okay. Then a new, huge neutron density uh, can occupy a large portion of uh, up and down quark uh, Fermi, Fermi C. And now uh, we want to try to put, for example, sigma or a uh, delta baryon. It is not uh, easy to put such baryon because u quark density, u quark states and d quark states are already uh, largely occupied by a large number of neutrons. So in that way, the baryon Baryon with different flavor actually are not independent of each other, and it is not correct to treat them independently. So if there are a huge number of neutrons, uh, there is some restriction for the uh, introduction of uh, hyperons or lambda baryon, et cetera, et cetera. So in this way, uh, actually, so it is known that the hyperon, introduction of hyperon uh, significantly soften uh, equation of state. Uh, but this sort of problem uh, can be tempered uh, by taking into account this sort of uh, cork uh, substructure. Uh, although uh, expressed calculation must be worked out. So here uh, is uh, some list of uh, what we to, to be done. So by uh, considering the cork substructure, the cork power, power blocking effect uh, given the non-trivial constraint on the uh, occupation probability of many baryon species. Baryons are not independent. The second important question is when uh, does uh, coke saturation uh, take place? And obviously, it should be sensitive to the baryon size. And of course, the, the size of baryon uh, may be changed in medium. So that is the important question to be addressed in future discussion. The last question is, uh, what is the uh, Hamiltonian, uh, reliable Hamiltonian uh, to compute uh, the energy of this system? And the minimization problem uh, should be formulated. Okay, so here, uh, now I, uh, I'm coming to the uh, uh, summary. So uh, most important, uh, one of the most important message is the recent neutron star observation uh, refresh uh, the view of uh, dense QCD model. In a particular, uh, the last year, a uh, 2.1 and 1.4 mass neutron star are shown to have a similar radius. And this is very important because this uh, co constraint uh, rejects a strong fast order phase transition uh, between uh, two and five times nuclear saturation density. And this uh, argument uh, let us uh, consider uh, the uh, quark hadron continuity picture as a good baseline. And in the last part of uh, today's talk, I emphasize uh, the importance of a uh, peak in sound velocity. And I derive the sound velocity peak uh, by considering the cork substructure volume. And since it has been derived uh, by the uh, cork saturation effect, it, I regarded it, it as a, a signature of cork matter formation. And the outlook is uh, there are, of course, a lot of things uh, to be done. So we want to have a more realistic or direct description of growth of our domain uh, beyond simple qualitative and schematic uh, picture. And especially an uh, important future problem is to compute flavor composition and to uh, and, uh, and then uh, relate uh, the flavor composition to the uh, QCD phase structure. And with this, I conclude uh, my talk. Uh, thank you very much for uh, your attention and sorry for ex extending my talk. Thank you, Toru, for this very nice talk. And so we are open to questions from the audience. Also, audience from the Zoom, if you have questions, please, you can unmute and ask. Uh, hi, uh, very nice talk. So. Uh, mm -hmm. I wanted to ask, like, uh, related to what you have said here in last slide. So, uh, this one? like, is this in the the last one, the, the one you are on? This yeah, one. This one. Okay. So you're saying, like, in phase structure, this can also be used, this kind of analysis. So, like, in uh, calculating critical endpoint, can this be used? Like, so, like, I have heard in a lot of uh, talks, like, it's very important. So there is a very important search going on for the critical endpoint in quark phase phase diagram. So there, like this kind of uh, peak in sound velocity, like these signals, do they exist like at those points, and uh, what are their properties uh, in like in those scenarios? 
uh, near the critical endpoint. Yeah. Okay, so actually, um, okay. So what is important is the contrast between low density regime and the high density regime. Mm -hmm. Okay, so for example, if suppose baryonic matter is somehow uh, is very stiff like this. Okay. Mm -hmm. And in that case, uh, we don't have a peak structure or peak structure is not so significant. Okay, and now, so this is first important one. And actually uh, what happened at finite temperature is actually uh, baryon there are thermal baryonic excitation, okay, and that increase uh, that that thermal effect uh, actually have a more impact on the uh, low density regime. So this uh, part is actually increased in this way. So sound velocity uh, the peak structure in the sound velocity is not as significant as uh, zero temperature counterpart. So that is a uh, uh, first important point. And another uh, also important point is there are uh, actually related to this sort of picture. So although this discussion is based on this domain, okay, uh, at finite temperature, uh, QCD has a lot of uh, uh, many uh, degrees of freedom in highly excited states. So if uh, those contributions uh, become significant, more and more significant, uh, then uh, those uh, Highly excited states are, are basically the non relative, has a non relativistic nature. So actually, it reduces uh, as those excited states contribute more and more, uh, then sound velocity uh, peak actually uh, decrease and it should eventually uh, make a, a deep structure. So that there are uh, two, two points, two, two things. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Hello, sir. Uh, so Hi. my question is, uh, like uh, in the QHC, like uh, quark hadron continuity, mm -hmm. you said uh, to get a transition from quark to hadron, is there any uh, lower bound energy for the hadron, uh, sorry, quark to like lower energy bound energy, lower bound energy is required to tra get transition in the hadrons for the quark? Um. Yeah, so, but that, that argument is basically already assumed uh, that there are some reliable hadronic equation state at high density that can be used for the comparison with quark matter equation state, right? I mean, so when we want to compare uh, in usual uh, hybrid modeling, so we uh, just, uh, uh, good, sir. Okay, so I, I don't have slide. So um, the point here is uh, what I have imagined in mind is uh, the, so there is no uh, sharp distinction uh, between uh, hadronic matter and quark matter. So actually, we didn't make any direct comparison between nuclear matter and quark matter. The point is, there is no uh, reliable uh, nuclear matter EOS at the high density uh, where a uh, coke matter uh, might might exist. So, but in conventional uh, hybrid modeling, uh, people just uh, extrapolate uh, some hadronic model uh, beyond the twice nuclear saturation density up to three or four times nuclear saturation density. And then uh, people also extrapolate a uh, coke matter equation of state down to three times or four times nuclear saturation density, and then make a comparison uh, between energy density or uh, pressure as a function of uh, chemical potential. So that is a conventional argument. But the point is, so there is no reliable uh, coke matter calculation which can be extrapolated uh, towards such a low density because there are confinement. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, nuclear calculation uh, cannot be buried uh, at uh, up to three or four times nuclear saturation density because the calculations are not controllable. So uh, actually, there is there is uh, no uh, reliable way uh, to directly uh, compare uh, nuclear EOS and coke matter EOS. And rather, uh, we just uh, consider uh, when the, these two, two description uh, cannot be distinguished, and then just uh, consider the continuity. Okay, so there is no comparison between nuclear EOS or coke EOS. Uh, there is no such kind of argument. Okay, thank you, sir. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. 
Any more questions from the audience from the Zoom? Hi, I want to ask a question. Mm -hmm. Yeah, please. Yeah, by this continuity, you mean crossover transition, right? Yes. So there is a uh, paper by Hatsuda Bem and other two collaborators in 2016 who argued using axial anomaly, they can have a critical endpoint you had yes. in the phase diagram. Have mm -hmm. you checked that work for uh, getting this sound peak? Uh, actually, they are my collaborator. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it is in 2006, uh, bit old. But whether their description can be incorporated into your uh, framework to show there is a sound peak because they have an explicit uh, model. Uh, yeah, but, but they don't have model for nuclear materialism. Yeah, but I suppose that crossover is between nuclear matter to quark matter, right? Yeah, but, but the problem is whether uh, they constructed nuclear matter. Okay, so if we start with just uh, a quark matter model uh, already at low density, uh, then uh, we don't get uh, sound velocity peak. For example, uh, this is, yeah, also, also this is two color QCD. But if, yeah, this is uh, without the composite type quark, okay? And if we just uh, using the, uh, yeah, just uh, if quark descriptions are already buried, already at very low density, and then just go to high density, okay? And then there is no sound velocity peak, okay? So we have to have uh, some composite uh, object which has uh, the, smaller mass uh, than uh, naive, uh, the description uh, based on a uh, cork model. So composite structures are important. So this sort of, okay, so this sort of uh, momentum distribution uh, cannot be achieved as, uh, unless we construct a baryon explicitly as a composite object. Okay, and their study uh, did not construct the baryon explicitly at low density. So I don't think, yeah, actually I did not test it, but uh, I don't think their model can directly read this sort of sound velocity peak. Thanks. If you want to derive, yeah, yeah, yeah explicit, if you want to derive a sound velocity peak in explicit modeling, uh, we should uh, construct a uh, baryon explicitly and then derive this sort of mom mom momentum distribution. Okay, we have to construct some bound states and then put many bound states into the system, okay? So this disparity in the behavior of occupation probability generate a peak in sound velocity. Okay. Yeah, so this part is difficult to describe in usual Coke model. And that's the reason why uh, usual Coke model does not lead to sound velocity peak. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Toru, I had a question. So, yeah. suppose you have not ordinary quark matter, but quarkionic matter. So, could you distinguish those scenarios of, of the quark hadron transitions? No, for me, it is almost uh, the same object. <laughs> yeah, actually, this is the argument. Okay. And we ask, I already assumed that the baryon exists. Yeah. Sense. And it's really some uh, sort of a dual description between baryonic description and the Kokma description. Because if uh, there is uh, uh, some radical uh, deconfinement, then uh, there is uh, no, no reason to keep this sort of distribution. Mm -hmm. This sort of distribution uh, originally come from, so this distribution come from a cork uh, trapped into small domain. Now that's the reason why uh, Quark do, do not occupy low momentum state with probability one, but it, it occupy only low momentum state with small probability, and there is some momentum distribution because it, it yeah, for example, if you construct a Gaussian wave function in coordinate space, and if you take Fourier transform, uh, then uh, it's a Fourier transform leads to the Gaussian distribution in momentum space, right? Yeah. So uh, this reflect, this sort of distribution reflect the quarks are somehow packed into some composite objects. 
-hmm. But even if uh, such composite object is put in, into the system, okay, eventually uh, we, at some point we have to introduce some sort of extended state. Okay, so when a uh, co-cooperation property with particular prime wave mode is fully saturated, uh, then that means such that the momentum mode is a good against state of the system, right? Mm -hmm. And prime wave is of course uh, widely extended. Okay. So this yeah. one I describe as a quark localized into in some object, but uh, putting many composite objects, eventually quark must be delocalized in some for some momentum for mm -hmm. some momentum. But there is a, still uh, some component uh, which are localized. So that, that's my interpretation. So in that sense, uh, this can be regarded as a quark matter, but. Uh, you can also have this sort of uh, distribution also in color superconductivity. So in that sense, uh, I, I discuss on the uh, the correlation near the Fermi surface are uh, crucial. Okay. Yeah. And yeah. also this uh, quark hadron duality picture that you're discussing. So uh, there was this question on the critical point. So mm -hmm. Near the critical endpoint, of course, you also have this critical modes due to the sigma yeah. fields. Mm -hmm. uh, don't they contribute to the speed of sound? Uh, uh, will there be also a dip in the speed of sound also near the critical endpoint? Because there uh, something yeah. drastic is happening, right? Yeah. So if yeah, you are talking about second order phase transition, right? Yeah. Critical. So the, yeah, at the second order phase transition, uh, then actually a sound velocity uh, reduce discontinuously like this. Mm -hmm. Uh, that uh, what happened in, in the at the second order uh, phase transition point, and in the first order uh, phase transition we have just uh, zero sound velocity because DP D epsilon is zero. Yeah. Uh, order, yeah, we have constant pressure and uh, jump in energy density, so this becomes zero for first order phase transition. Mm -hmm. And for second order phase transition, uh, DP D epsilon uh, does not have to be zero, but uh, it drop at this continuous to finite value. Mm -hmm. From here to here, for example. So that can happen yeah, in, around the critical end point. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And another question I had is uh, mm -hmm. you are mentioning always about uh, zero temperature. Yeah. But then uh, when you have neutron star mergers, mm -hmm. then of course you will have a finite temperature system. Yeah, sure, sure. So then uh, will anything of your analysis change? Or do you have uh, to yeah, use yeah. different equation of state in the yeah, that's yeah, yeah. Uh, but basically, uh, yeah, but the reading order statement would be, um, yeah, neutron star merger. Uh, actually, yeah, the temperature does not increase dramatically. Yeah, it is order 10 or 20 MeV or at most 30 MeV for realistic equation, equation mm -hmm. state. You might uh, see some drastic increase in temperature by some other people, but that is basically, uh, comes from the latent heat from the first order phase transition. Okay. Mm -hmm. There is no first order phase transition. A typical uh, simulation uh, leads to the rather small temperature. Uh, the point is, so neutron star merge, okay? But uh, actually, uh, what collide is uh, basically the surface initially. Mm -hmm. The surface of uh, two neutron star. Yeah, so, so, so uh, the collision is not a head on. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So two neutron stars, uh, yeah, go around over the other uh, neutron star. So what happens first is the surface has some sort of friction. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then that, uh, the, that heat up the matter at the surface. But that heat up the, uh, the, uh, the matter at the relatively low density up, up mm -hmm. to yeah, around the uh, saturation density or twice nuclear saturation density, but the core does not get heat up rapidly. Okay. So therefore, the high density part uh, rather remain cool. Yeah, that's uh, uh, what I learned from the numerical simulation by other people. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, anyway uh, but basically, the effect of finite temperature effect uh, basically is just uh, uh, smooths out. And the finite temperature effect is more relevant in dilute regime, and that increase 
some are contribution increase in this domain. Yeah, but in finite temperature regime, of course, you may not require this quark hadron duality. It can be explained by the broadening of the hadrons as a function of temperature, thermal broadening and all. Yeah, but uh, anyway. Um, yeah, there may be another explanation, uh, but uh, I don't have a feeling uh, that. Uh, yeah. Yeah, why continuity is, is lost at the higher temperature for now. And there should be some other physics. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, to spoil continuity picture. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, by the way, I, I, yeah. I, I, I'm not sticky, sticking to the crossover in strict sense. But what is most important? Uh, to me is uh, by taking a uh, quark hadron uh, continuity picture, okay, uh, then uh, our focus is naturally uh, toward the relation between hadron physics and uh, matter physics. Because uh, when, if we want to push continuity picture, uh, we have to know hadron physics. And what is the role of quark uh, in hadron physics? Okay. Yeah. And uh, on the other hand, in quark matter side, we have to uh, consider seriously about hadronic correlation inside of quark matter. Mm -hmm. And that is really the, uh, the main message I want to push. And whether uh, phase transition is really a crossover or have a small first order phase transition or second order. Actually, that's not so important to me for now. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's a more detailed question require more subtle discussion. Yeah, but uh, I believe a continuity picture uh, it can be a good starting point for any such kind of discussion. That's my point. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So I see no further questions. So I would like to thank, thank you very much for staying so long and explaining us patiently about your work.